We like playing video games with other people, and today on Get Indie Gaming, we take you through the top 10 co-op games you should look at picking up in early 2020. Just a quick disclaimer, we didn't include Rocket League or Minecraft, and while rightly considered as masterpieces, we feel they've grown beyond a place in this indie-focused rundown. So without further delay, let's begin at number 10 with Towerfall Ascension. While it first came out in 2013, we've more recently picked it up to play all over again following its launch on the Switch, where it's made a fine home within the Get Indie Gaming household. As when it launched as it still does today, while super fast and frantic, it's also very accessible with the controls and mechanics easy to grasp and understand, while succeeding and also being pretty darn difficult to get masterful at. There is a single player, although it offers perhaps 2% of the fun you can have with it in local couch co-op, ideally with some very good friends who don't mind the odd expletive being hurled in their direction. This, in a few words, is still a proper ace and should, if it isn't already, a true classic of the genre. At number 9, and just like its predecessor in this list, Shrine 2 can be played in single player, although it's in the local co-op where it truly shines. This elegant side-scroller has you pick one of three characters, each with differing abilities that can be used to solve puzzles you find throughout the game. In single player, some sections feel a tad stop-starty, with rhythm breaks aplenty, although when playing with a friend or buddy alongside you, it can all flow with a joyous precision in what's the strongest puzzle platformer within the series. Viewers have in the past suggested Trine series offers something as good if not better than Portal 2, and we can see why some might think this to be the case. For us though, what makes Trine 2 so very good is how in co-op, it really does force players to combine their strengths and in so doing, mutually discover how best to find a way forward. What's your plan? Stay the hell away from me, okay? At number 8, A Way Out is pretty unique in what it does and comes from the team behind A Tale of Two Sons. In this co-op only game, there is no single player. You play as one of two prisoners looking to escape a correctional facility in what on paper would have been a risky product for developers Hayes Light to find backers for, which they ultimately did in the form of EA, who we agree aren't your archetypal indie game publisher. While in places the story feels thick and heavy with cliché, as a co-op game, either local or online, it offers some of the best narrative adventure of its kind out there. In fact, there's nothing quite like it with its bombast and not-so-subtle nods to the Uncharted series and perhaps walking sims such as Life is Strange or even Firewatch. All in though, as I said earlier, it's unique and it's an enjoyable romp that when played together with a mate and some friendly banter, makes it something bigger and more fun, all Shawshank jokes aside, than perhaps could have been expected. Up now at number 7, Heave Ho sees you and up to three others having the simple enough sounding task of getting from point A to point B across vaulted levels without falling to your deaths. Now how good a couch co-op game this is shown through when we first saw this at EGX Resd in March of last year. While we spent a fair time with the demo as a group, we had the most fun playing with strangers and randoms, where each to a person we quickly got on well with each other and shared laughs and jokes aplenty. The silliness of the upward splatter upon each death is certainly what makes this all so enjoyable, as are the character animations and physics-based gameplay. Heave Ho is excellent. More people should play it. Up now at number 6, and the only bullet hell game to feature in this countdown, Enter the Gungeon features roguelike elements and comes with a top-end level of difficulty that while not as tough as the next one to feature in this countdown, it's still enough of a challenge for anyone without cat-like hand-to-eye coordination skills. It's also brilliant fun though. You play away and shoot while dodging fire within the randomly generated dungeons full of traps, secrets and loot. The boss battles are hugely enjoyable and more so when played in co-op, where you can have someone else to blame when things go wrong as they will many times over. 
If you like your bullet hell games and want to play with friends, well Enter the Gungeon is the best of the bunch. Cuphead takes the number 5 position in this rundown and while we've spoken in the past on the game's content, gatekeeping and accessibility issues with it hiding material behind difficulty, setting such matters aside, it is so very beautifully animated with it being one of the most visually and orally striking games of the past few years. It's also as the saying goes, hard as nails which for many is the whole appeal of playing this while in single or in couch co-op. On paper you might think playing with a buddy would make it easier but that's not really the case. If anything, playing in co-op sees the stakes and atmosphere rise higher as each player worries what the other's up to and whether or not they are helping or hindering the overall action. With the DLC out at some point in the year, Cuphead is a couch co-op game people are likely to love and loathe in equal measure. Welcome, adventurer, to an RPG unlike any other. In a world forsaken by the gods, the people need you to become their next divine. Divinity Original Sin 2 sits at number 4, and while you and three others can play cooperatively together within this sprawling and utterly brilliant RPG, if you don't want to play by the rules, so be it. You're not constrained in towing the line of the party, so to speak, and if you fancy it, you're able to go off and do your own thing in what becomes a mix of co-op and competitive gameplay and with it, this game becomes all the devilishly better for doing so. How you go about this kind of co-op is fully yours to make. We favour a collaborative approach as we quite like getting along with each other here, although for a bunch of friends who like a good bit of natured mockery and silliness, you can go all out and very much play the bad guy. You're easily able to wreck parts of each other's games by pretty much any sort of in-game action you might think of. The single player remains one of the best RPGs you can play today, and when you add what you can do here with co-op, it's utter genius. Okay, I'm looking at what appears to be a deadly bomb. Roger that. You're gonna have to defuse it. But how? Up now and at number three. Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes just edged out TikTok a tale for two as the best example of co-op asymmetry you can play today. It features at least two people, one of whom is looking to defuse a bomb with the other, helpfully offering hints and tips by way of a bomb disposal manual. Of course, neither the person trying to defuse the bomb or the person with the bomb disposal manual can see what the other person is up to and as such, Players must nail the communication in order to bring about a successful outcome. In all honesty though, Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes is better played with more than just one person with the manual. With more people involved, there's more cooks to turn the milk sour with the person cutting the wires often being left in a communication vacuum while those reading the manual um and are their way into making a decision. Naturally, all this creates one heck of a tense and yet enjoyable atmosphere, and there's honestly nothing out there at the moment to match what Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes does so very, very well. At number two, as many of you will already know, Stardew Valley's co-op experience is something really quite different to anything else within this rundown. For starters, playing as a farmer is far removed from the shooting, exploring and other types of antics usually offered in co-op, and while we've been tending our crops and chatting away to NPCs quite happily for years, the addition of multiplayer has given Stardew Valley that little extra sparkle to keep coming back on what seems looking at our play history almost on a daily basis. While this not so little farming sim has always felt a warm and cosy place to while away the hours, the multiplayer update has made it all the more so by enabling what feels a real and tangible community, where people for the most part are there to help and make others happy. Sure every once in a while there's mischief here and there, although we've not experienced any kind of grief aside from the odd crop or livestock being pinched while we were looking the other way. If you've played only the single player, you're missing out on what alongside kind words is one of the most warming community driven games you can play today and goodness knows, we could all use plenty more of that. Of all of the games to feature in this best of co-op list for early 2020, our number one 
overcooked is by far and away the most stressful, the one most likely to bring out a player's passive aggressive tendencies, and what's most important, the finest and most enjoyable of all co op games you can play today. Overcooked 1 and its successor Overcooked 2 are essentially interchangeable, although the sequel is the one we'd go for given the choice with it coming with online as well as local multiplayer options. In any case, both games see you and up to three other players tasked with plating food to order from the ingredients you find around your kitchen. You'll be making burgers, sushi, salads and much more, all of which needs you and your fellow players to coordinate the chopping, frying and plate washing to get the plates over to the service area. With each level adding more complex dishes and preparation techniques, success comes just as it does in real life kitchens from constant and accurate communication between all of the chefs, which sounds easily enough and yet that's the big no right there. From the get go it's disorganized chaos and with Overcooked you have a perfect storm to test even the strongest of friendships and relationships. It's co-op perfection and quite frankly the finest game of its type we've ever played. With the Overcooked series taking our top slot in the list of the best co-op games for early 2020, which of these sort of games do you enjoy playing the most? Be sure to let us know down in the comments and if you've liked this video please click that like button. Likewise if you haven't yet done so, now's a perfect time to give us a virtual hug and subscribe to the channel and in doing so join one of the largest communities of indie game fans on the whole of the YouTube platform. As always, many thanks for watching. We look forward to seeing you all again here soon for another indie game video.